Good morning, Dan and Amy. And uh, boy, uh, amidst all of the Kavanaugh swirl, this story that broke on Friday, uh, New York Times report that Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein, remember, he's the guy overseeing, quote, quote unquote, overseeing the Mueller special counsel yeah. investigation, that Rosenstein uh, joked. I don't know, talked about secretly recording President Trump for the purposes of getting information that would allow, well, him and the political leadership of the country to invoke the Constitution's 25th Amendment and remove him from office, suggesting that he is does not have the capacity to be President of the United States. Yeah, it was either having Mueller or somebody in Trump's cabinet secretly record him. And President Trump didn't uh, take to it too kindly. They're all gone. They're all gone. They're all gone. But there's a lingering stench, and we're going to get rid of that, too. Yeah, he, they're all gone. He's talking about the bad actors at FBI and the leadership. This was at a rally in Missouri. The uh, lingering stench, he may or may not be talking about Rosenstein, maybe after the story. Yes, so the New York Times reports that he wanted to do this, Rosenstein. Then there's a report that, uh, no, no, it was a joke, yeah. according to Justice Department officials requesting anonymity who spoke to NBC News. He's kidding around because if you know Rod Rosenstein, you know he is a cut-up. Guy is a riot. I mean, was he at a party or something and said, hey, wouldn't it you know, be funny if one of us wore a wire and yeah. got the president? If he's acting erratic, then we can invoke the 25th Amendment. <laughs> uh, Lisa Page, she the paramour of one disgraced former FBI agent, um, Peter Strzok. Her according, former lover. According to uh, Daily Beast, two sources told the Daily Beast that FBI lawyer Lisa Page was present for Rosenstein's comments on secret mm-hmm. recordings and did not believe he was joking or being sarcastic. Oh. So what are we to believe? By the way, of course, Rosenstein has denied the New York Times report, saying it is factually inaccurate. What are we to believe on this matter, and uh, how much more can our confidence be shaken with respect to uh, the chief law enforcement agencies of this country, FBI and DOJ? For more on this, we're pleased to be joined again by our friend Andy McCarthy, former Chief Assistant U.S. Attorney in Manhattan, contributing editor at National Review, nationalreview.com. Andy has written about uh, this latest controversy. Andy, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. It's my pleasure. So uh, the question I posed was uh, Rod Rosenstein, funny, funny man, or uh, weasel, uh, or (laughs) uh, watch too many Donnie Brasco, watch Donnie Brasco too many times. what, What do we have here with Rosenstein? Well, I've never, I've never thought cut up and, and weasel were necessarily mutually exclusive. But sure. uh, I've also yeah. not, not quite found um, Rod Rosenstein to be uh, Rod Dangerfield, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, so although he does get you know, no I, respect. I, yeah. Well, he shouldn't, um, because what happened here is you have a guy who I don't think the Trump administration vetted very carefully. But there's a reason why, at a time when it was very difficult to get Trump's nominees for top executive branch officials through uh, the Senate, that Rosenstein was confirmed by 94 to 6 with overwhelming Democratic Party support. And what very simply happened here is he's not the swiftest guy in town, and he miscalculated. He thought that he was going to be roundly praised and applauded for the memorandum he wrote supporting uh, Jim Comey's being dismissed as FBI director. And what he didn't factor in was that by the time that happened, the Democrats had moved on from being angry about Hillary Clinton losing the election to Trump derangement. And Comey had made himself very useful in that effort And for that reason, they perceived Comey's firing as an opportunity to make a uh, an obstruction case against President Trump and to ratchet up their calls for special counsel. So much to 
uh, Rosenstein's surprise, I believe, uh, rather than being praised for his Comey memo, he was bitterly uh, attacked and savaged over it. He had never in his life been anything but praised uh, by, you know, the, the denizens of the swamp. And everything he's done since then is quite understandable in the nature of trying to get himself back into the good graces uh, of the people he's so disappointed. And that's why he talked about removing Trump under the 25th Amendment. I don't think he was really serious about taking any concrete steps to do that, but I think he wanted to signal to everyone it was important to him to signal to that he was with them on the matter of Trump's fitness. It's well, why he talked about uh, recording them, and it's why he appointed a special counsel without having a legal basis to do that. Well, do you think it's possible Rosenstein leaked the story himself to the paper? No, it looks to me like the uh, the Times has a lot of sources, and in particular, I think they're getting a lot of information from the uh, Andy McCabe camp. It looks like a lot of this story, Amy, came out of um, these memorandum. Uh, or memoranda, I should say, that, that uh, are written by top officials of the FBI, particularly McCabe. The Times is a little bit cagey about whether they've actually seen these memos or whether they're relying on the accounts of these memos from other witnesses who've seen them, but I think that's where most of the story comes from. Is uh, time for Rosenstein to go? The Wall Street Journal thinks no. You know, look, I, I think it's... <laughs> We're seeing in in, um, in connection with Kavanaugh, right. Dan, the dynamic here that you end up having to put up with a lot of nonsense that you wouldn't otherwise put up with because the Republicans have a very, very thin margin in the Senate. I mean, it's effectively – it's 51 to 49, but it could be that they're effectively three seats down or you know at least one seat down because you've got a faction – uh, of Republicans who seem to blow one way or the other on every important issue. So it's not like, you know, Trump can just, uh, you know, fire fire this guy and bring me the next uh, deputy attorney general. It's very complicated to get somebody uh, well, that's, through. Well, that's, and, yeah, that's right. But, I mean, here, here's the thing. I, if I was Trump, I'd go to them if there was any holdouts here with Rosenstein. Um, just like with Brennan, with Mueller, you've seen Gowdy and Graham, you know, move significantly in Trump's direction based on the performance of Mueller and the FBI and the DOJ and Rosenstein. Say, you know, what exactly does it take? What 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 is it that would satisfy you to say this guy has to go? This uh, there's he's a cancer on the Department of Justice or he's a cancer at the FBI, and we have to cut him out. I mean, this is this is utter silliness. What is the point of having a Republican majority? Should we just cede the majority and get back to the minority where we can actually do stuff and we'll support the president in doing stuff that should be done? I mean, what's the point of having this fragile majority if you won't act with it? Well, first of all, it's only a majority if it's a working majority that you can actually act with. Well, I I'm as frustrated as, I'm as frustrated as you are by that. And, you know, I, I don't think anybody has written more about Rosenstein than I have from the beginning, uh, including when a lot of people were of a mind to, uh, to sort of, you know, let's give this poor guy uh, a break and a chance. Um, if it was up to me, he'd have been fired. You know, well, he wouldn't have been appointed in the first place, but he'd have, he'd have, been, he'd have been gone long ago. Well, but th well, that's uh, my and point. And, and I think, you Kavanaugh know, look, if you, want to, if you want to implement a plan where Trump takes somebody who has – a, a prayer of actually getting through like you know trump decides i'm firing in one fell swoop sessions and rosenstein and i'm appointing lindsey graham who i think is like you know lindsey is somebody who i you know i i agree with on a lot of things i disagree with a lot with a lot of things but uh you have to say no matter what you think of him he seems to be loyal to trump uh, he seems to know what he's uh, talking about in terms of what the important issues are that come before the Judiciary Committee and, and are in front of the Department of Justice, and he could conceivably get confirmed. Yeah. But unless you're going to do something like that, if he takes these guys out, he's got no chance of getting another person through to run the Justice Department. And we're now talking about, you know, we're just a few weeks before the midterms. Nothing is going to happen in in the way of getting these guys replaced till February or March, and even that will hinge on how the midterms turn out. 
Yeah, I mean that's just a that's a, a long time to endure this kind of uh, uh, undermining that's apparently going on. I mean, I th- I would think it, you could go to the flakes of the world and say, look, you may not like me, but if you were in my position, what would you do with Rod Rosenstein? He's overseeing the special counsel investigation while he was previously actively trying to set me up. I mean, if you were, if it was President Flank, how would you react to that? How would you deal with yeah. that at no, uh, with respect to number two at justice? I mean, come on. Dan, that's how, that's how you see it, and that's how I see it. But it's not how these swamp denizens see it. They think that Mueller's great. They think that Rosenstein's great. They think that they're longtime uh, apolitical, nonpartisan, uh, yeah. trustworthy uh, uh, bureaucrats who are just – you know, they're just doing the best they can to do their job. And, you know, if it turns out that they sit the special counsel on the president of the United States and put the governance of this country under a cloud of criminal suspicion under circumstances where there was no underlying criminal offense, well, you know, that's just the way it goes because these are honest, uh, trustworthy technocrats who are just trying to do the right thing by the country. Well, that's a, sort of uh, Mark Penn's piece in The Hill, too, Um the, the uh, Rosenstein dilemma and his take on it, where he essentially says sort of what you're saying, damned if you do, damned if you don't. But he also suggests that the deep state is is unraveling before our very eyes. Do you see the, the deep state such as it is, and even forgetting that phraseology, just FBI and DOJ and the senior hyper-politicalized leadership of those agencies unraveling, or are they kind of circling the wagons, closing ranks, and more likely than not to survive? Dan, you know when I'll believe that that's happening? When I see that Trump submits a budget to the Congress that says on the line for the Department of Justice, if it says something like four million instead of twenty-eight million, then I'll, or billion, I should say, not million, right. um, then I'll start believing it. You know, all this business about the personnel—we're talking about the wrong end of the equation. You know, if you decide that the Justice Department is not is doing more harm than good. And it, believe me, it, does, it gives me no joy to say this. I'm very proud of having worked in the Justice Department for, for a lot of my adult life, for 25 years. But if you get to the point where you think that this is an organization that instead of enforcing the laws of the United States is weaponizing them for political purposes, you need to strike their budget out. Forget about you know Rosenstein and Sessions and all the rest of this. They are they are capable of being weaponized because they have lavish, nearly thirty billion dollar budgets. And if you want to get them where they live, you got to take their money away. Well, that's a good point. He is Andy McCarthy, former chief assistant U.S. attorney in Manhattan, uh, also now a contributing editor at National Review, NationalReview dot com. You can always get uh, his musings on Rosenstein and Kavanaugh and the Mueller investigation and everything else swirling in the swamp. Andy, thanks as always for joining us. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Have a great week. You too. And he joined us on our turnkey.proanswerline.